Hello and welcome. In this series of geometry lessons, we've tried to make Euclidean geometry theorems and their applications more accessible. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to apply any of the theorems to solve or prove geometry problems. Today's problem has several steps. Once we've solved them, we'll make a list of hints that can be useful when you are trying to solve any rider. But first, let's say hello to Kanye, who will be helping us again today. Hello, Kanye. Got your pen and notebook handy? Hello, Johnny. Always bring on the problem. As I said, today's question has several parts. In the figure, PQ is a diameter to circle PWRQ. SP is a tangent to the circle at P. Angle P1 is labeled as X. Question 1.1. Why is angle PRQ equal to 90 degrees? 1.2. Prove that P1 equals angle S. 1.3. Prove that SRWT is a cyclic quadrilateral. 1.4. Prove that triangle QWR is similar to triangle QST. One point five. If Q W equals five centimeters, T W equals three centimeters, Q R equals four centimeters, and W R equals two centimeters, calculate the length of T S and S R. It is always worth spending a minute or two looking at what we are given. We are given diameter PQ. What theorems do you think we can use with PQ, Kanya? If PQ is a diameter, angle PRQ is 90 degrees because the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Very good. We are also given that SP is a tangent that means the circle at P. What theorems can we use with this information? Did you think of the axiom about the radius perpendicular to the tangent? If PQ is a diameter, don't forget that it is made up of two radii. The diagram also shows several triangles, and we might need to use our triangle knowledge. There is a quadrilateral SRWT, but it is not in the circle, so we don't know much about it yet. With all that in your head, you are now ready to look at the questions. Angle PRQ is the angle at the circumference, with the straight angle POQ at the center subtended by the same arc. So that means that angle PRQ is 90 degrees, half of 180 degrees. Yes. To prove question 1.2, we will probably use angle X and the 90 degree angle at PRQ. We obviously also need to look at where we are heading. Here is one way to do it. This is certainly not the only right way to prove the angles equal. Look at angle S. It's part of triangle PRS. Do you see that if R1 is 90 degrees, then R2 plus R3 is also 90 degrees. Yes, there are adjacent angles on a straight line. But that means that in triangle PRS, the leftover angles will also equal 90 degrees because the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So P2 plus S is 90 degrees. Now look at P1 plus P2. They also add up to 90 degrees because the radius is perpendicular to the tangent PS. Very good. Moving on to question 1.3. Prove that SRWT is a cyclic quadrilateral. 
Think about how to prove that a quad is cyclic. We could prove that the opposite angles are supplementary. But we don't know much about these angles. Or we could prove that an exterior angle is equal to the opposite internal angle. There are two possibilities here. We could try to prove that T1 equals R3, but we haven't worked with these angles in previous questions. It seems that we should look at proving that angle W2 equals angle S. Again, what we have just found in the previous question should be useful, that P1 equals S. Do you see the links? Look carefully. Can you see that W2 equals P1? Yes. There are angles in the same segment subtended by QR. So here is your proof. P1 equals S. It's been proved. W2 equals P1 because of angles in the same segment. And so W2 equals S. So SRWT is cyclic because W2 is the exterior angle equal to the interior opposite angle S. Very good. We are ready for question 1.4. Prove that triangles QWR and QST are similar. Can you remember what that means? Their corresponding angles are equal. Yes. This question is almost done before we even start. All we need to do is to prove two angles equal and the third one therefore has to be equal. Have a look at the two triangles outlined in the diagram. Can you get their angles equal to each other? You've just proved that W2 equals S. That's one pair of equal corresponding angles. Q1 is common to both triangles. That's a second pair of corresponding angles that are equal. How do we know that the third pair will also be equal? They have to be equal because the sum of the angles of each triangle is always 180 degrees. So the triangles are similar. You've got it. Here is question 1.5. This question has specific lengths of sides in it, and it involves the sides of triangles. Which theorems do you think will be useful for this kind of question? You can use your theorems for similarity and proportion. If triangles are similar, then their sides are in proportion. Can you see that you will probably make use of the answer you've just found to question 1.4? We've already proved that triangles QWR and QST are similar. Yes. And similar triangles are all you need to find the lengths of the two sides asked for. We want to find TS in triangle QST, so use it at the top of a ratio with the corresponding side in triangle QWR. Be careful that you match corresponding sides correctly. You need to check this using the corresponding angles that we found in the last question. The corresponding side to TS is RW. Now we need to use this ratio equal to 1 that uses the size that we know something about. We know the length of QR in the smaller triangle. The corresponding side in the bigger triangle is QT. Do we have QT? W plus QW makes up the lengths of QT, and these lengths are given. So it makes sense to use QT divided by QR. So TS divided by RW, which is 2, equals QT, which is 5 plus 3, which is 8, divided by QR, which is 4. Working that out, you get TS equal to 4 centimeters. How can you find SR? Can you use anything from the triangles? SR is a piece of SQ. 
Yes. If we subtract RQ from SQ, that will give us SR. Using similar triangles again, we want to find SQ. We can say that SQ divided by WQ equals TS divided by RW. That gives us SQ divided by 5 equal to 4 divided by 2. Multiply this out and SQ equals 10 centimeters. If SQ is 10 and QR is 4, then SR is 6 centimeters. Yes. The five parts of this exam question are worth 16 marks of the paper. 16 marks that I'm sure you can get if you practice different geometry riders or problems. And of course, you need to know how to use your theorems. And where to start once you've read the problem. Maybe it will be useful to reflect on how we approached these problems. This will help you to build up a set of skills to apply to any problems presented to you. First, read the problem carefully to check what is given to you and what you must prove or calculate. Make sure that any given information is clearly marked on the diagram. If it is not shown, fill it in on the diagram yourself. When you are clear about this, look at the diagram to see which of your theorems are likely to help you towards your goal. For example, this diagram with a circle includes chords, but no radius or diameter and no tangents. So you should keep in mind the angles in the same segment theorem. It also has a cyclic quadrilateral in it. Yes. This should remind you of the exterior angle equal to the opposite interior angle and opposite angles supplementary. It also contains several triangles, and so you should know that you can use work from previous grades about triangles. The sum of the angles, isosceles triangles, exterior angle of a triangle, etc. The next tip is to look for links between the given information, the theorems you know, and what you are trying to prove. Sometimes you need to move from a given angle to another equal angle using a theorem and then to the angle you need to find. Sometimes there are more steps in between what you have and what you want to prove. Sometimes it is more useful to start from the angle you are looking for and work backwards from there. When you get stuck at any point, it is also useful to work from both ends. Get as far as you can from the given angle and stop. Then go to the angle you need and work backwards as far as you can get. Another tip that really helps is to use colored pencils and make markings all over your diagram. Mark off equal angles, making sure you know why they are equal. Outline the arms of the angles in the same segment, or the angle at the center and the angle at the circumference. Also mark off any parallel lines. This helps you visually to see what is possible. However, this also needs a warning. When you have marked off equal angles, you still need to go back to your written proof and make sure that you have not just assumed anything that you put onto the diagram. Every mark on the diagram that you need for the proof must have a written reason to go with it. Here are those tips again. Read the given and what you must prove carefully. Mark the diagram. Two. Look at the diagram and identify theorems. Three, link the given, the theorems, 
what you must prove. Four, use colors or markings on your diagram. Using all these tools and hints, the theorem statements and what is given in the questions, you are now ready to tackle some exam type questions for your task. Remember that the full answers are provided in the mindset lesson notes for this video series. In the diagram, AB is a tangent to the circle with center O. AC equals AO and BA parallel to CE. DC produced cuts tangent BA at B. Here it is. Please check our website to get the information needed for the task and other print-related information.